there are different dimensions of energy in the human system, from yang to yin. At the yang level, we have bone, the most dense um, material of the body, but it's also, especially if you read Taoist texts, it's crystallized energy. That's how they look at bone. Yeah. Again, Western aspect is that it's a, a material. And bone can be very flexible. You know, usually, especially from the Western point of view, we think of bone as being something hard, but you know, from the standpoint of touch, bone has flexibility. And we can work with bones like we can work with muscle. We can work with it like we work with fascia. Bone can become more flexible, and bone can be compressed. It can be compressed. So sometimes a person with a short leg, let's say, um, by measurement, this one leg that's short can be because those bone molecules due to injury or stress, various kinds of stress, have become compressed. And I've seen where bone has decompressed, the leg length has become more equal. So anyway, um, we want to have both views, actually, that bone is a material, it's a physicalized material, but it's also crystallized energy. And that's the bone molecule is very much like a crystal. The Taoists have very specific practices where they activate energy through the meridians or through the chakras and then bring that energy into the bone and store it in the bones. And there's been research that shows that those practitioners have a much higher bone density level at older ages. And we know that from you know, Western studies on osteoporosis and things like that, that bone density becomes less. So they've done some on some of these practitioners and found out at 70, 80 years old, they still have bone density of the average, you know, 30-year-old Westerner through these practices. And they also do practices that compress energy into the tendons and ligaments. So that would be the next layer up, tendons and ligaments. Kind of like stretch bands, you know, that people use for exercise and attach to the, the bones. Another interesting tissue, and the tendon and ligaments have a whole unique um, sensory sensor system in them called the Golgi tendon organs. And this is something really to be uh, understood. It's an intelligence in the, in the body that has many important dimensions to it. So I'm just going to put it's interacting with the brain. It's interacting with um, the energy system to produce some very uh, important uh, adaptations for one. Adaptations. Very important also in the evolution the human system. Uh, if we go to the next layer, now we're going from most dense to less dense muscle. Muscle, another energetic storage, you know, there's um, in any muscle at rest, there's potential of energy discharge from the stored energy in there. So to do work, if you move a muscle, energy is discharged from that stored energy. There's also a high, um, high level of chemical reaction in muscles because every time a muscle acts, there is an interplay between sodium and potassium, which is like being young, polarized and reacting with each other. Um, if we go to the next less dense layer, we have fascia. And fascia, another, as all the other layers, has, you know, similar but also unique properties and uh, interesting properties because fascia has memory. And when we use the word memory, usually we think of you know something that happened in the past that we can recall. But we're talking about that memory plus a metaphysical memory, which would be also kind of future memory. Um, 
Fashi will remember everything it has experienced in the life and all things about that. It stores images, it stores odors, it stores uh, energy, images are all um, impressed into the fascial system. Um, and the fascia also conducts energy. So it's through the fascia that the meridian flows. It's a, what you could call a conductive medium. Kind of like how electric needs a wire to run from the socket to the light. The meridian flows through the body via fascia. So the condition of fascia can be really important when we're working with meridians, when we're working with chakras, when we're working with other kinds of vibrations that influence our system. So we could say that the next step up from fascia is meridian. Electromagnetic pulse flowing through the body. Uh, at this level, this is a crossover point. The fascia and, and meridian is a crossover point into the energy body. A lot of time, I use a lot of different words depending on the on the context. I might say energy body, I might say outer body, I might say bioplasmic body, but all mean that say the energetic. And I, I it's a system. It's a functional system, not just like a haphazard array of energies that are spewing out. Like, you know, when we see pictures of the aura, it looks like a light bulb like sending out rays. But this energetic body or outer body is a functional system. It functions, first of all, like a membrane. It can become more or less permeable, depending on what's happening um, at that moment in the environment, internal, external. Let's say if you're aware and you're in a situation where you feel danger, that outer body, and that could also mean emotional danger, psychological danger, that outer body permeability could become less permeable. Therefore, it's like, say, like what's called psychic frequency or telepathic frequency may not be able to penetrate your system. Um, or maybe you're in a, an environment that's very relaxed you feel very open, the permeability of this energetic body can become more. So more impulse coming in, more maybe emotional vibration, more um, mental waves that are entering the system. And the thing, just briefly to go into this, because maybe we've talked about it before a little bit, but it's a unique aspect to this work is to consider the energy body to have this functionality of a membrane that has never been defined before. However, this is becoming a center point. I don't know if you really want to spend time even thinking about the meaning of this or not, but it is a center point in this moment of human evolution and the awakening of consciousness. Because for the first time in human development, we are at a point of consciously regulating the permeability. Up till now, for most people, and if you're going, oh, that's something, that means that you have not really been consciously regulated. So you may be walking around sometimes in a very permeable state in environments that are not really that great and getting whacked over, I don't want to say whacked over the head, but I guess whacked over the membrane. You know, like if, if you walk in an emotionally charged environment and you're really open, how do you feel later on that day? Well, you could say, well, I feel lousy, but you also feel drained. You feel empty because it will pull energy out from your body. But if you go through an environment like that and you're aware, you can consciously make those membranes less permeable. So you're not either losing energy to those 
forces, or you're not taking in energy from those forces. That can be important in social, social situations. I learned a lot about that traveling through airports, train stations, which are really highly charged emotional places. A lot goes on in places of transit, let's say, emotionally. Um, in other places like shopping centers, malls, people are just so, there's all kinds of emotional debris floating around in those places that you can get attached to, or can attach to you. So, um, especially if you have been doing any kind of practice that elevates consciousness. Anybody doing anything like that? Yoga, meditation, um, body work, um, positive thinking. Then you have been provoking your membranes to become more permeable, just so you know. So you become more susceptible. And so one of the reasons you may be here right in this moment in time hearing this is because it may be time for you to understand that you need to sometimes make yourself less permeable. Now the next question is, how do I do that? Well, it's a good question, isn't it? Maybe we'll find out soon. Or maybe you'll figure it out yourself. But it is part of what we're doing here, is to understand how to become more or less permeable depending on the appropriateness of the situation. And sometimes you're hurting yourself by being too open. And sometimes you're hurting yourself by not being open enough. Not hurting yourself, maybe, but missing opportunities. Opportunities to connect. Opportunities to resolve. Opportunities to uh, have empathy. So, um, this is the level where that energy body and physical body first interact with each other. Okay, I'm kind of retracing now to where I took off into that point. And meridians, which are more electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic impulses, descend into the fascial substance and travel through the body, conduct through the body in that way. So if we have a restriction in the fascia, it's going to affect the flow of the meridian. And it's for this reason that I think in Shatsu, or acupuncture even, we should understand that if we want to improve the flow or balance the flow of a meridian, we should have some awareness of the medium that it flows through. And it could be one of the reasons that treating someone from that perspective of Kyoin Jitsu, you know, um, acupuncture point, meridian, why improvement sometimes doesn't go further. It's because something underlying that has to also receive some attention and be worked with. And that could be fascia in this example. Now, electromagnetic impulse is the meridian level of frequency. At muscle level of frequency, we have electric, electrical pulses. So energy, but at a different frequency band. And it's also, uh, as I mentioned, this is the layer where the energy body, the outer body, or bioplasmic body, and I'll be using all those terms different times, but it's the same thing, but looking at it from a different angle. And the layer, immediate layer, that interacts with the physical body is called the etheric body. So just to do a brief, crude drawing. the meditating man drawing. The etheric body is very close to the physical body in the classical sense, maybe two to three inches from the skin out. And it creates kind of an envelope. Think of it that way. It holds our body in its form. A vibrational envelope. Now, the thing that's not understood, I think, well enough, and we can start to understand this, and it also gives us kind of a um, quantum change in our, not only our understanding, 
but also our site, our, our vibrational site, our energy site, is that the etheric vibration is not only around the body, but it also penetrates into the body. So as much as it's outside, it penetrates deeply inside. It penetrates through the skin, it penetrates through the muscle, it penetrates all the way down to the bones and into the molecular stasis of the body. So it's deeply inside. And so it's, it's also a theoretic body inside around organs, around nerves, around tissue. And it could be while I'm talking about this, you start to have an image about it. And I want to just alert you to that. That if you have an image about that, there could be a reason why you're having that image. You may be picking that up in the atmosphere. Because also, while I'm talking about it, I'm also generating that image. It's something to consider. Um, there is also uh, a chakra on the left side of the body called the spleen chakra, or in the Latin term, the little sun chakra, translation of Latin. And the little sun means that this is the uh, chakra together with the etheric body that regulates the immune system. So this is really important to maintain or to reconstruct immunity. And it also has some kind of a, uh, gives you like an impression that sun is important for immunity. To absorb sunlight into the etheric body. Now that's something that of course you might think, well, just walking around outside. But if you consciously understand that, you can absorb sunlight to a higher level, drawing it in. So similar to what we're talking about. Once you can expand membranes and you can make them less or more permeable, you can also become permeable, absorb greater degree of sunlight. And so this is all how the consciousness is developing and evolving together with the energetic system of the outer body. So um, another layer that's classically said to be about six inches to maybe two or three feet from the skin surface is the emotional body or astral body. Now, as we go away from the physical body, each layer is a higher frequency. And just to say that as we go into, especially, well, the etheric body as well, but we we'll get into the emotional body, we are now starting to depart at this level of our being from the constraints of physical space and time and the proportionality of distance. So when we go out into this emotional plane, we can say, yes, it's three feet from our body, but when we enter our consciousness into that, it's actually a whole dimension. And as you know, you can travel there it expands out into you know, the domain of the planetary system, into the solar, um, the solar level of energy. And also going now further and beyond that, you have the mental body. Now, the, the um, emotional body is more, more magnetic. But when you get into the um, mental body, now you become radiatory radiation body. And now you're going into a much greater dimension, much vaster distance. When you bring your awareness into that layer, you're now traveling a solar level and beyond. If that doesn't mean anything right now, don't worry about it. And many of you are, are traveling you know, during your day, during your night, having experiences that you don't really fully understand. But a lot of times it's because the consciousness that during the day, when your eyes are open, it's focused here. What I got to do? How am I going to survive? But sometimes, especially if you're involved in practices like meditation, etc., when you are at rest, your consciousness is at a higher frequency. So instead of being 
compressed into this dimension of awareness, it's decompressed and can travel at these higher vibrational frequencies. So you have experience of traveling, of changing of time ratios, and uh, you're at the beginning point of understanding the mechanism of how that works. Now when we get to the, um, to the border of the mental body, this is also another kind of membrane. And it's something similar to how the body fascia comes to its surface point as skin. This is a very specific membrane. And our, our being also goes past that. But that's a discussion for another time is actually taking place. I mean, we can see here's the body and all of what's contained in the body. And we have the skin. And the skin we know is a membrane. It absorbs and transmutes sunlight. It breathes, so we know that it's a very complex membrane. But it also is kind of a border between the physical dimension and this energetic dimension. And in a similar way, this membrane is like a skin between this energetic dimension in a higher dimension that we sometimes are interacting with. So we may not be concerned with that, and you may not care about that in this moment, that's okay with me. However, I wanted to draw out a schematic kind of understanding of how the body has layers. They're all energetic layers, but densified into a different form like bone and crystal, the elastic nature of tendon and ligament, the sponge-like electrical nature of muscle, the gel-like nature of fascia that has memory to so all uh, experiences that we have. And uh, now then that accommodates the flow of what we've been studying up till now, meridians. And for some of you that know about, I didn't put that in there, but at the etheric layer, is the vibrational center of chakras.